Okay, so we are just west of Zion National Park, and I'm actually standing on a really unique feature called the Hurricane Fault. This fault is unique because it helped shape Zion National Park into what it is today. Without this fault, we wouldn't have Zion Canyon. So today I wanna to explain four principles regarding faults. First off, what are faults? Second, how did the hurricane fault form? Third, how did this fault fault help shape Zion National Park? And last, how do we know that there is even a fault here? So basically faults are fractures in the Earth's crust. They're fractures that have actually shifted or offset. Uh, a common misconception that a lot of students have is that all faults are located along plate boundaries. That's not true. Uh, plate boundaries, plates shifting and moving towards or away from each other, can place stress on the individual plate and cause fractures within that plate. So faults don't actually have to be along plate boundaries. Uh, faults can be very large. In the case of this fault, we have thousands of feet of offset along this fracture, or they can be really small, in some cases up to centimeters of offset. So this fault, or all faults I should say, are the result of tectonic stresses pushing or pulling on the Earth's crust causing these fractures. In this case, the entire uh, region of southern Utah and all of Nevada is actually being stretched, it's being pulled apart. As it's pulling apart, the crust is, is thinning, it's getting thinner. And as it's thinning, deep fractures are forming. Well, the type of fault that is formed from these deep fractures is called a normal fault, where one block actually slides down the fault plane as extension is occurring. So the hurricane fault is the result of extensional stresses pulling apart the crust right here. We picked this location for a reason. If you look behind me, you'll see the town of Leverkin, which is in a valley. And if you look the opposite direction, you can see Zion National Park, which is much higher than where we are right now. So the Hurricane Fault is actually uplifting Zion National Park while down dropping this valley behind me. As this offset occurs, the river that flows from Zion into this valley, you can see it behind me, it actually becomes steeper. And as the river steepens, it becomes more energetic. It flows faster, giving it the strength and the energy that it needs to carve into the bedrock, to remove the, the material from Zion National Park, to downcut and erode a, a really deep and beautiful canyon. The most obvious answer is this fault is active and therefore produces earthquakes. And these earthquakes are felt quite frequently and they are detected by seismographs. Uh, this fault is large enough that it can produce earthquakes that are over a magnitude 6.0, which can be pretty damaging to structures. Uh, we can trace the epicenters of, of these earthquakes to this fault plane that's behind me. Okay, so next, uh, the next reason is if you look behind me, you can notice on my right, there are a bunch of reddish colored rocks. And on my left, there are grayish or yellowish colored rocks. These are two different rock formations that are two different ages. The reddish colored rock is about 230 million years old, and the grayish colored rock is about 270 million years old. Meaning, the reddish colored rock slid down this fault plane, placing it at a lower position relative to the grayish colored rock. Okay, and last of all, just along the road behind me, there is a very prominent plane of rock that is very polished and has really prominent grooves on it. This polished surface is the result of this movement along the fault plane where this block is sliding down, grinding and polishing, creating this uh, preserved fault plane.